number 22 when ethanol reacts with HCN and then hydrolyzed by acid what we have the first stage reacting with HCN we actually have cyanohydrin uh, and then hydrolyzed with acid we'll get this compound here so MR for this compound is 90 if we use propanol heated with potassium dichromate we actually oxidize it to an acid propanoic acid MR of 74 so difference between the, the two MRs will be 16 number 23 propanol this compound here if we use concentrated sulfuric acid we will dehydrate it into propene and then if we were to add bromine br2 we will get 1,2-dibromopropane which is not what we want if we add hydrogen bromide the hydrogen will come here the bromine will go to the other side we will get 2-bromopropane which is the product that we want ethanolic sodium hydroxide is actually to remove halogens from halogen alkanes so not applicable here it's not for dehydration number 24 we have this ester that is formed how can we get the structure of this ester so focus on the functional groups the acid is here and the alcohol group is on the other other molecule so we try to put them together if it helps to visualize you can you can write it out in this manner this is the acid in this order COOH the alcohol I put the group up here so that we can join it easily and then the CH3 two groups of it is down here so what happens in esterification your OH will be gone your H will be gone from the alcohol there will be a COO bond here so if you look carefully at the options this whole string up to here will be for this part and then this C is important it is this C here this carbon okay. then CH3 two groups and COOH so A will be our structure Twenty five is a bit of recall. You have to be familiar with the conditions. Which one takes place at room temperature? It's actually D. Okay, the other other three options require heating. Twenty six. Which one is actually a redox reaction? For option A, concentrated sulfuric acid dehydrates your alcohol you form an alkene it's not a redox reaction B aldehyde and tolerance reagent your aldehyde will be oxidized to a carboxylate salt your silver complex AG plus will be reduced to AG so it's a redox reaction here C is an ester being hydrolyzed is not a redox reaction D is a ketone it doesn't react with failing solution so no reaction also twenty seven the product is first warm with aqueous sulfuric acid notice here there is an ester group so COO group when it's hydrolyzed with an acid this is gone and it becomes COOH so that's the first part after that it's treated with hydrogen 
with a catalyst so your hydrogen will attach itself to these double bonds hydrogenate the alkene bonds it doesn't affect this bond don't forget this is still an acid group so it only affects the alkenes and then it becomes saturated so what we have will be A Twenty-eight. We have this polymer to form back the monomer. We will remove these joints and put the double bond here. They want the skeletal representation, so anything that's hydrogen we don't represent. That's why we have B. If you're tempted to choose C, these points are actually carbons. And if they don't do anything else, this is actually CH3. Totally different from our monomer here. Okay, same. If you to draw it out, this one is CH3. This is CH, CH. Twenty-nine. We have. A ketone reacting with hydrogen cyanide to form a cyanohydrin. So this is our product. What is the feature? One chiral center that is incorrect because actually there are two similar groups joined to this center carbon here. So they don't have four different groups. It is formed by nucleophilic addition reaction, not electrophilic. The intermediate is not COH intermediate. The intermediate is a negatively charged here. Okay. Formation requires the use of cyanide ions as a catalyst. So this is the cyanide ions that will first attack your ketone. Once it forms an intermediate, and then it can react with your hydrogen cyanide. So you do need your cyanide ions as a catalyst. Which of these compounds have chiral carbons? We we'll sort out the obvious one first. These are the chiral centers. They are joined to four different groups. Okay. The hydrogen not being represented or not being obviously shown. So these are the chiral carbons on two, three, and four. Why is one not a chiral center? Because if you look at it, if you go on this side, we have CH two, CH two, CH two, CH two. If you go on this side. This direction we have CH two, CH two, CH two, CH two. So it's actually the same regardless of which direction we take. That's why this is not joined to four different groups. Thirty one. When we collect ammonia and dry ammonia. We must use something that doesn't react with ammonia. We must remember that ammonia is alkali, so it will react with acidic dehydrating agents like your phosphorus oxide and your sulfuric acid. Okay, your acids will react with your ammonia, and then you not you get a salt. Your calcium oxide is basic; it will just dry the ammonia and not react with it. Thirty-two. Which statements about these extraction processes are correct? Carbon behaves like a reducing agent. We can see that carbon becomes carbon monoxide. It is itself is oxidized, so it is a reducing agent. Magnesium becoming MgCl two. Magnesium in the process is being oxidized. It itself is a reducing agent. 
chlorine becomes Cl minus itself is reduced it will behave like an oxidizing agent so statement 3 is wrong only 1 and 2 is correct which statements about covalent bonds are correct a triple bond consists of one sigma bond and two pi bonds so statement one is wrong the density is highest along the axis between the two bonded this is true and if you have a pi bond you can't rotate about the axis and that's why we get our cis trans for our organic compounds